There is a song, I'm sure you all know it. Um, it's called Make Me a Servant. It, the the yeah. words are, make me the servant, humble and meek. Lord, lift me up, those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be, make me a servant, make me a servant today. And it says, make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, lift me up. Lord, Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be, make me a servant, make me a servant today. Okay, so... We, we are all servants of Christ Jesus. That is our service for Christ. We serve each other here in the church. But what I want to talk about today is really pertaining to those of us who are weak. And you guys came because you're supposed to be weak. So anyway, and I, I want some... I want some interaction between the two of you. Like I preached last time, we all have a function within the church. Uh, some of us are arms, some of us are legs, some of us are, are voice, some of us are listeners, some of us, but we all are here to serve each other. To build each other up and to, to bring us into the fullness. Uh, you, at Hermanas, you would be kind of, I mean, the, the church is a place like a hospital. Um, this isn't a place, this isn't a, a country club where we come in and to, uh, it's a hospital. We're here to, to um, help each other, to bring us out of the world and make us whole in Christ Jesus. Uh, Hermano and myself, we would be more like Luke, the, the physician, the doctor, um, in, in our job. But anyway, uh, like we said last time, when you pick up a cup to drink, do you use your foot or do you use your hand? When you see something, do you see with your eyes or do you see with your ears? Do we get jealous with somebody else because they have a gift that we want? Do we say, oh, because I'm not a hand, I'm not going to be part of this, I'm going to be angry, I'm going to leave. If I'm not an ear, I'm going to be angry because I want to be what you are. But we, we all have a gift, and, and this is all important. Um, So, but anyway, as we were talking before, before you all came, um, we were talking about the Anabaptists. Now, the word Anabaptist is two Greek words put together. It's Anna, which means against, and baptismo, which means, uh, to put them both together, means against baptism. In saying that the Anabaptists were against the teaching of infant baptism. They were against infant baptism, and they were also against, there was two things that they were mainly against. One was against infant baptism, which got them the nickname Anabaptist by the Catholic Church, because they were standing in opposition to the Catholic Church. Uh, they also believed and taught against the hierarchy structure of the Catholic Church. Uh, because the Catholic Church taught that only the clergy had the right to do certain things within the church. Like the clergy would forgive sins, um, the clergy would set up laws that the, church, the people of the congregation would follow. And one, one in particular is the people in the church are not able to read the word of God on their own. It only had to be done by the clergy within the church. Mm -hmm. 
una revista y un grupo de gente que estaba en, en contra de, del racismo. Entonces, ella se Anna Baptist is Anna and Baptismo, which is Greek for Baptist, for baptized. Uh, baptismo is the, the act of being baptized, and Anna means against. And it's not that they were against, I had always thought that they were against baptism, um, and I discovered this week that our, our church is part of that original uh, the, the Anti-Baptist Christian, which is the denomination, came out of that Anti-Baptist, but it was against the baptism of infants. They said that baptism was a conscious choice, not uh, a thing that the church does, and you being baptized doesn't save you. Uh, to, to say that a, a child who is six months old were baptized with no knowledge of why they're being baptized it does absolutely nothing for them it's a, yeah it's a dedication and, and and we believe in dedicating a child when they're born but to baptize them in saying that this is going to bring me into security with god is not what the bible teaches but that's how they got the name it was a slur much like christian today christian uh, was not given to us by the followers of, of Christ. Christian, the name, name Christian was given to us by the people in Antioch as a, as a slur, as a slang, as something that was bad. They, they called us Christians, meaning the followers of Christ or belonging to Christ. Up until that point, we were called disciples. Okay, so it's not an organization that was organized for But the, the, the Anabaptists, which is originally the Mennonites, um, the Church of the Brethren, the Apostolic Christian Church, and the Baptists. We, we well, yeah, the Amish later on, but the Mennonites was, was the first. And they stood in direct opposition of what the church, the Catholic church, and the Protestant church were teaching um, on several aspects. The Catholic church against uh, uh, church authority domination and the, the, the baptism of infants. That's what, that's what they were standing against the Catholic church. But against the, the, against the Protestant church, they stood against the, the political and social order. They thought that they, the, the Anabaptists were um, going against the, the social and, uh, the social and, and the um, authority of the Protestant church as well. To the point where the Catholic Church, all the original founders of the Anabaptists were killed by the Catholic Church before the year 1600. But to get back to my original topic, and and we uh, we all have a job to do in. I don't have my scriptures written down, but I'm sure we can all agree with what I am saying because we already know the basis. Um, the, uh, the, uh, David said in his psalm, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's, that's God's word 
That's God's word. God's word is Jesus. And the word of God comes through Jesus, which we received from the apostles via, through the Holy Spirit. It is said in the scriptures that all scripture is breathed by God, which that breath is the Holy Spirit. Um, so it is the word of God. And that word of God is the light unto our feet. And it's a lamp unto our feet. I wish I, I wish it was dark outside so we'd shut all the lights off so I could give you a, a demonstration of what I'm trying to talk about. I have my flashlight with me, but it's too daylight. So here's where I'm going to ask the question. If God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, what does that mean? What, what does it mean in God's word? I mean, is it, is it just words? What is it? Um, what does it mean? This is where you guys get to come in and say what you want to say. What does that mean for us as followers of Jesus Christ? What does that mean for us? How how does that how does that affect? Jesus also says, you are, as talking about us, that we're the light of the world. That we're supposed to let our light shine to the rest of the world. For us, it's the light of our path. For us, it's the light of our path. So we can, so we can, so we can come uh, see where we're walking. So we can see how we're walking, spiritually speaking. Okay. And, and the light uh, the, on, on our feet is for the, so, so the other people can see who is coming. So they can see that, the, uh, that what you possess in you is something special that they, uh, that, that they need to understand what it is. What is Dora saying? Ramona, Dora? He's asking about uh, where's the, the, the garment supposed to be? Uh, where does that, the word supposed to be? You want to find the verse, honey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. I, I found it. Some of the. 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 It's in Psalms, uh, Psalms 113, I think. Something I forget. Sorry, I wasn't totally 100% prepared today. Don't worry, brother. And my phone is being used to record, so I can't use my phone to watch it. really want to start using the big chalkboard we have because um, one thing I've learned and this was from one of my professors when I was in college he is it 119 that's what I thought I thought it was somewhere around there One nineteen, verse one hundred five. One hundred five. Okay. 
See, I know the scriptures, I just don't know where they're at. That's a big problem. <laughs> I wonder if the robots can go through them. It says um, Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And then also in 106, it says, I have sworn and I will confirm it that I will keep thy righteous ordinances. There again it is it is confirming that we are supposed to we are supposed to walk in the word. Okay. And that's one thing the people of the world have against us in the church. They say we walk, we don't walk what we talk. And what that means is we say we're Christians and that we are living by the word of God. But even the, the, the unbelievers and, and the unbelievers who are not of the church, they know better how we're supposed to live than we do. And they, they, they tag us as being hypocrites, and I'm, I'm going to agree with that. The majority of today's modern church is hypocrites. They say one thing and they do another. It's like the parent who smokes the cigarros, and they're sitting there with a the cigarette in their mouth telling their children, don't smoke. And they tell their children, don't go get drunk. But yet mom and dad go out and they get drunk at the party every, every Friday night. And we do that in the church also. But we do it in religious things. We say that we live forgiveness and we live love. I want to explain something about love and forgiveness. Love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. Love is God. We either decide to love or we decide not to love. Much like a lot of things in the Bible, forgiveness is an example. Forgiveness is a decision. It's not a feeling. We confuse feelings with decisions. Um, I love you. Oh, but you know what? You don't make me happy. You don't make me feel good anymore. So I don't think I love you anymore. You know? We confuse love with feelings. If I have this warm, fuzzy feeling, I love you. But if I don't feel warm and fuzzy, then I don't love you. Oh, okay. All right. Now, it, it, love produces feelings. Feelings don't produce love. And, and we confuse that. But as far as what we do in the church, we are supposed to show love. We are supposed to be the light of the world. We are supposed to be the salt of the earth. And how do we do that? Hermana Dora, how are we the light of the world? How are we the salt of the earth? How are we, as the church, the light of the world? She's uh, saying that uh, according to the way we talk about God. Okay. Good, that's good. good. Is it Alodia or Lodia? Elodia. Elodia. Hermana Elodia. Hermana Elodia. Okay, I got it. Elodia. All right. So, how do we shine God's light to the people around us? This is, this is really easy. You guys are thinking too deep. You're thinking too spiritual. To shine the light of the world is, is so simple that we can't, we can't see it. It's, 
It's simple. Think, think basic. Think basic. Yeah, think basic. basic. Don't think all spiritual. Think basic. Okay, let me explain to you how we are the light of the world. When you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off and you're rolling down your window screaming at them, uh, telling them what a bad person they are, are we being the light of God? <laughs> is that the light of God? <laughs> no, that's not the light of God. When our, when our boss at work tells us we have to work, oh, we have to stay late and work over, even though we had plans, our response and our reaction to him is either the light of God or the darkness of Satan. When, when we are laying in the hospital with cancer, how we present ourselves to the people around us is either the light of God or the darkness of Satan. So, are we, this is, this is uh, asked by the Apostle Paul, are we the light of God or are we the darkness of the world? And we all want this church to grow and we have a small congregation and there's some changes coming and uh, pastoral uh, uh, and uh, Baiza and myself, we are, we are, and the first ladies are working on making some changes that we can um, bring more in and, and bring the truth of God to these people. But I want to ask one question. Who makes sheep? Do sheep make sheep or do shepherds make sheep? Where do sheep come from? Sister Eloria, how many shepherds do you see out in the field giving birth to a sheep? The, the, the shepherd protects the sheep. The shepherd teaches the sheep. The shepherd leads the sheep to places to eat, to places that are to drink that are safe. They where they grow up and they become full grown adult sheep. That that's our job. Sheep make sheep. So it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a group effort, it's, it's our job, it's our thing. But number one, we are servants of the Almighty King. We are servants of the Almighty King, and our job is to serve others. And I always use this example, it is an excellent example. I went to this church in South Carolina. Um, I was the only white person there. I, I seem to get that a lot. I go places where I was not normally uh, expected to go. But even though I was the only white person in the church, and it was the church was in a very bad location. It was, it was, in, it was like in a ghetto almost. But the church was about this size, and they had all the windows open because there wasn't any air conditioning. 
in the side lots on both sides and the front yard was just filled with people. And I came in and they're like, oh, brother, come on in, come on. And they kicked somebody else out. They said, no, I want to go out and talk with my friends anyway. And they gave me a seat within the church because there was no room. There was no room for me in the congregation, but they wanted me to come inside. So someone gave up their seat. Someone gave up their seat for me to take their seat, and they humbled themselves. The, the church was huge for a small church. It was it was it was triple the congregation size of what was pit in the church they had. Um, but they showed love. They showed the love and the light of Jesus. That's why their church grew out past its boundaries of the building. And that's that's what we need to do. But we, we all have a job. You have a job. I have a job. At Hermano, you have a job. At Hermanas, you both have jobs, and you do too. Our job is to serve. Now, like the Anabaptists, they were in direct opposition to not only the world, but to the church, because they were coming out of the false teachings of the church. Now, when we're here, we're all in unity. We all agree that we are supposed to follow the scriptures. We all agree in the apostolic stance that we are supposed to live by the teachings of the apostles, which we all agree is the word of God breathed by the Holy Spirit. We understand that. But the second we walk out that door, we're in direct opposition to everything the world stands for. And we have someone new come in here, and they give their life to Jesus, and Pastoro and uh, Baiza and myself, we bring them the light of the world, or the light, we bring them the light of God, sorry. Um, and they get born again, they get saved, and it's all great, they're here, and they, oh, I'm saved now. And they walk out that door, they walk out their door, they're like a sheep going out into a pack of wolves. How many, how many of you seen the videos where the pack of wolves is, is coming to pray and they're, they're all they're, they're salivating and they've got drool coming down their mouth and it's like, ooh. And they're ready to pounce on that sheep. And when they walk out that door, they're on their own. And Jesus talked about that with the parable of the sower, where he says some of the seed fell on uh, on stony ground, uh, some fell on good side, and some fell by the wayside. But the, the uh, seed that fell on the stony ground sprouted up, and it died because it had no roots. And when they leave, the birds of the air pick the seeds up off of the rocks. And that's what happens with the wolves out there. They're out there. It's like our sister who, uh, she doesn't come here anymore because she got the truth of the word of God. She was convicted. She went back out into the world and, and, and the wolves of the world stole that word from her. But we, we are a hospital for the sick. Jesus says, Jesus says, the healthy don't need a doctor. And the righteous don't need salvation. The, the, the righteous don't need salvation and the healthy don't need a doctor. So we're going to be getting people in here who are sick who need the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. <coughs> So we plant the seeds, and y'all, y'all, that's Texan for all of you. Okay, I, just to, I don't know how you say that in Spanish. But, uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's going to be hard for them to understand. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you all are the little support group. The, the church is the support group. To, uh, uh, we're a support so group. But yet, when, I, you know, and I've been to so many churches that I've seen this, you come in, and if you don't match up to, you know, we, we have a problem here in, in the apostolic church, not not this church, but in, in a lot of the apostolic church and a lot of the holiness churches. We get so righteous and we get so holy that when someone comes in who's not righteous and holy, we kind of like, I'll, I'll get, I went to a church down here off of uh, Highway 80. This, But I went to this church over here off of Highway 80. I'm not going to mention its name, but they were having communion. And the Holy Spirit just came on me. And I, I mean, it was, it was, he was showing me things. And tears started coming to my eyes. And I couldn't stop the tears. And I'm sitting there as a wife in the tears. And I can't stop them. And the people are looking at me. And they're like, <laughs> and that's not what we're supposed to do. When we see that the Holy Spirit is moving on somebody, we need to go over to them and we need to say, brother, sister, how can I help you? We're not supposed to say, oh, I don't want nothing to do with you. You're different. You smell different than me. You dress different from me. You know, and that's not how these people who are coming in, they're going to be sick. We're going to have people. We're going to have people coming in who, who are living in sexual immorality. We're not here to judge them. We're here to give them light. Now, there, there, is, there, is, there is a point in time where we need to separate ourselves. If you don't have the gift of edifying and building people up, then you need to leave that gift to someone who has that gift because we don't want to fall ourselves because we get too influenced by somebody else's lifestyle or sin. We don't want to be, if you catch yourself being influenced by them, you need to step back. I don't want, but everybody has a gift. And God brings the gifts into this church that we need for us to grow. So, I want to kind of, I want to kind of cut this, this um, kind of wrap up now. But anyway, um, we're here. We have a job. What is our ministry to this community? What is our ministry to the people in our lives? When I worked for Dominoes, when I was, I was manning one of the managers of the Dominoes over here that we were off of Route 52, um, we, my, my crew had a saying, what would Kenneth do? And they meant it to be sarcastic. They meant it to be sarcastic, but because I was known to do things by the book. In fact, I just flat out told my supervisor that, uh, you know what, you sent me to train, you sent me to six months of training. Why are you telling me to do something different than you trained me to do? So I'm going to do what I was told to do. If you have me to do something else, then you need to change training. <laughs> Es lo que, 
saber Jesús hiciera qué es lo que Jesús hiciera o sea, si, no, si algo sucede qué es lo que Jesús hubiera hecho ¿Qué haría Jesús? ¿Qué haría Jesús? Usted sigue, lo voy a decir por mí, a mí una vez estaba una línea bien grande enojada, y llegó una pacífica en el niño, que ni qué qué hace. ¿Qué haría Jesús en ese momento? ¿Qué hice yo? Yo la desperté para atrás. <laughs> ¿Jesús qué haría? ¿La dejaba allí o la desperté para atrás? But someone, some, somebody would ask a question, what should I do in this situation? Because we have a customer complaining about something or something like that. And their response would be, what would Kenneth do? Do what Kenneth would do. The right thing. Do the right thing. She, she said, Brother Kenneth, that when uh, the pandemic started and that and the people started panicking and going to the stores and trying to order everything, she, she was trying to grab some uh, canned food. And here comes a, a girl and, and almost, uh, she says, she almost broke my arm because she, she got on the way. And, and then what she did is just step back and said, hey, go ahead and take them all if you want. Like, but, you know, it's, it's, it, we need to, not what Kenneth would do. What would, I mean, this is something that came out in the 70s. And it came from that book that I told you guys about in his, in his steps, uh, where uh, this church and congregation, this pastor came to the realization that they weren't doing what they should be doing in Christ Jesus. And we need to think to ourselves, what would Jesus do? And we, we need to do what Jesus would do, regardless of whether or not people think it's the right thing, because that's our light to them. This is how, you know, let me, let me, let me, Kind of, I like I like using um, uh, examples. Um, let's let's use an example. Um, Hermana Dora has a bunch of tomatoes. Okay. She has a plethora of tomatoes. Wait, do that one, huh? Okay. <laughs> she has more tomatoes than she knows what to do with. And I come up to Hermana Dora and I say, hey, look at all these tomatoes I have. Don't you wish, don't you wish you have what I have? Right? But you already have more tomatoes than you know what to do with, right? Okay, and, and we think that we're doing that for Christ Jesus. We're coming up to people. We have something that they don't have. We have something they don't have. We have peace when life storms beats us. We have happiness when we have no reason to be happy in the sight of the world. We have all those things that Jesus promised us in his word because we surrendered our life to him. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to put in a, a, a little line for, for Jesus here right now. You want peace, you want happiness, you want joy, you want love, you're, you want your life to be full and meaningful. That only comes by complete and total surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. That's the only way you get this peace, this patience, all this, the fruit of the Spirit that we get, all the stuff that Jesus promised us. We only get that by a complete and total surrender to him. That's, that's how we get it. And we, when we live in obedience to the word, and as Jesus says, the 
the good works that we were predestined to do, the good works that we were predestined to do are the works that are our light to the world, our peace and our happiness and our joy. I was going down to the post office uh, down in the wing <laughs> the other day, and it was a Saturday, and the lady that was in there, she did not want to work on Saturday, but she had to because there was nobody else there. And I'm, I'm out in the back, I'm out uh, unloading my truck, and I'm back, and I'm out there unloading the truck to bring the mail into her, and I'm out there going, Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy, and I walk in, she goes, were you really out there singing? <laughs> and what she tells her, no, I was going over to you. <laughs> but, no, she says, you are not allowed to be happy. I have to be here, and I don't want to be here, and I'm not in a good mood. But still, she says because he has the uh, peace of the Lord and she doesn't have peace. <laughs> yeah, she, she didn't have peace, but because of my peace and my happiness, it was able to make her have peace, something that she didn't have on Saturday. And this is our job. But we can only do our job when we completely surrender to Jesus Christ 100%. We have to say, it's not my life anymore. I give it to you to use how you need. And that's, that's our process of sanctification. You know what sanctification is? What is sanctification? What is sanctification? I mean, just the basic. Algo básico, no perfecto. That's one of those words that we say that we really don't know what it means, right? Well, she knows what it means, <laughs> but she says she, she doesn't know how to explain it. Right, okay. So I, I will make sanctification really, 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 really simple. You have a designer. I have no idea who designed a ballpoint pen. But, but to be sanctified means that you are being used in a manner that the designer of you created you to do. Okay, so what is the purpose that the designer of the ballpoint pen, what's the purpose of the pen? So pens are supposed to be used with a hammer, right? Is that sanctified? No. No. Um, well, I have an itch in my ear. Is that is that is that sanctified? Okay. Let, let's try let's try this. Is that sanctified? Okay. How are we sanctified? What is our purpose? Our designer made us. What is the reason why he created us? What is our job that he designed us to do? He created us with love, but we, we are designed to walk in the will of God, which is this right here, by reading it and applying it to our life. This is one of the teachings that the church has gotten away with, that we are still teaching, that we live by the word of God, and our sanctification is when we are living by the word of God and we are shining our light to the world, that we bring his love to other people's lives because we have something they don't. We don't sell ice cubes to Eskimos. Why? Because they have es they have ice cubes. You don't sell hot sauce to a farmer who raises chili peppers. You don't sell hot sauce to a farmer who raises chili peppers. Right? Right? 
We have a whole world out there that's searching for what we have. And we need to start doing that. So what I'm going to ask right now is we have um, we have a job to do right? as a church. If this church is going to grow, we need to start operating in the gifts that God gives us. And I, I'm not being judgmental, and I'm not saying that you, you this is between you and the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit needs to be equipping you. And that's why I'm here, and that's why uh, Pastoro Edmundo is here, to bring this truth to you, that you can start operating in the gifts that the Holy Spirit has to you. My brother... Uh, Edmondo and me, we have the gift of talking. We have the gift of teaching. <laughs> What's your gift? <laughs> I kind of forced my sister into operating <laughs> in the gift today. <laughs> but in doing so, you're blessed. <laughs> you <laughs> operating... <laughs> With you operating in edification to the people of the church, edification, building up, building the people in the church up, you get blessed more than they get blessed. And when I'm up here doing what I'm doing, I get more blessed than you get. The teacher learns more than the student. But what is your gift? What is your gift for the church? What is your gift? And that's, this is something we really need to pray about. This is something we really need to search about. Because we're going to start having people come through the door. And these are not going to be people who are uh, living a righteous and holy life. These are going to be people who are searching. But uh, Pastoro, Edmundo, and myself, we can only do so much. And our first ladies can only do so much. And we, we have things that need to be done. We need door greeters. We need people who come in who are going to let people know. I mean, when, when, when someone comes up to you and they're talking to you, there's two ways people can talk to you. They can, you, you go into a church and some people talk to you because... They, they got this attitude. It's like, well, I'm, I'm only talking to you because the pastor told me I need to be more open and talk to people who come into the church who are living a sinful life. And, you know, I'm just. And then you've got somebody else who comes up to you and they have a genuine love that they show that they, they have compassion and love for you. And that's, that's a gift. Not everybody has that gift. But what is your gift? So I am going to make a stand right here. And I already know my brother and my sister are, have already, they're making that stand with me. But I'm going to ask that all of you make that stand that we are going to live a life purposely to show God's light and love to the people in our life. We should be making sheep out there. We, we need to be making sheep. The people in your life, I mean, uh, I, I have this thing, and I, I don't like wearing one of these. I really don't. My wife thinks that I need to because, well, you know, you're, whatever. But I don't like wearing these because I don't wear this when I'm out in town. And one false teaching is being taught all over the church. You dress one way at church, 
when you leave there, you address another one. And I'm sorry. From what I see in the Word of God, the way I am here today is the way I am out there. There should be no difference in who I am here and who I am out there. Huh? Right. It's, it's the person. And who I am here, who I am here, who I am there, who I am playing the guitar, is the same person I want to be out there. And I have made a stand and I have made a commitment. I am not leaving here. I am going to stay here and I am going to fulfill my purpose of being sent here by the Holy Spirit. And Brother Edmundo, I would like to, if you, uh, we, we, I would, I would like to see that we have, who, who, are, are, are you willing to stand with us in, in living that life for Christ and being the light of the world and make a commitment to being used in the manner in which we were intended to be used here and out there to bring other people into into Christ Jesus. Because without us, they don't, they don't have no hope. But I will let you, I will, I will let you close. Sorry, sister. No, 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 and it's not that we think we're ashamed, but it's not that we think we're ashamed, but we, we are. And we're the, we're the only, we're the only light that people have that don't have Jesus. Because the majority, and this is going to sound judgmental, but it's not, it's the truth. The Word of God says that you're going to judge by the Word of God before anybody said anything. But um, when we go, when, when the church goes out there, there's no difference between the people in the church and the people in the world. No. You, you can't tell a difference. They respond the same way to hardship. They respond the same way to people doing something wrong to them. They respond, everything in their life is the same as the world. The only difference is they go to church on Sunday. And they, they get all dressed up and they, they act all spiritual on Sunday. And then when they go out and they go out of the, out of the they're cussing and swearing, they're telling dirty jokes, uh, they're being angry with people, I'm going to sue you, and there's no love in their life. And if there's no love in your life, you don't have Jesus. It's just that, it's that simple. And we're all that the people of the world have as an example of what Jesus is. And that's one thing I like about this church is because we do teach that we walk in the fullness of God, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And I am going to turn this over to you and how do you say in Spanish? I'll let you go ahead and close out the way the Holy Spirit teaches you. But in the nombre of his, or, uh, Señor, uh, Señor Jesus el Cristo. Amen. Amen.
And I'll let you take over. I'm working on my Spanish. Uh, we give thanks to God for uh, the word today. And I'm going uh, to say today that, uh, like Brother Kenneth was saying, that this uh, place, is, it's, a, it's more of a hospital than anything else. It's not a social club, like you were saying. And uh, our work here is just plain and simple. And just like uh, Brother Kenneth was uh, talking about the way we dress and, and all that good stuff. I mean, um, yes, uh, we, we are people that are trying to show the, that um, we live a life in Christ and that Christ lives within us. And we're not trying to uh, show anything else that we don't live. So... Uh, we just are simple people that uh, we just speak simple and, and, and try to teach the word of God and, and not go um, so much uh, by emotions, but to move according to the word of God. Um, I just want to read this uh, moment in a scripture on uh, on John chapter 13 and verse 15 and San Juan capítulo 13 y verso 15 verse 15 of chapter 13 on John and I was talking earlier about that when uh, Jesus washed uh, the, his disciples feet when he was saying that he was going to be taken away from from this uh, from this earth he was going to go back to his place and he said where I'm going you cannot go yet so uh, Peter told him to stop what he was do, uh, doing what he was doing he was washing Peter's feet and uh, Peter uh, felt like he didn't deserve to, uh, for his feet to be washed by the master. But, the, uh, but Jesus told him that it was necessary. So on verse 15, he says, For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. And that's what John 13 and then verse 15. And, and, and San Juan capítulo 13 y el verso 15. Okay. So uh, Jesus did it for that purpose. He washed Peter's feet. Amen. To set an example that Peter should do the same with his brethren. Hallelujah. With the rest of his uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's what the preacher was saying a while ago. Just a moment ago, our Brother Kenneth was saying that that's what we're being called to. To serve others, one another. We are here, I'm here serving Brother Kenneth. I'm here serving Brother Dora, brother, I mean Sister Dora and Sister Elodia as well. Right, Brother Kenneth? Entonces, aquí en el verso 15 dice... Uh, hablando de, de lo que hablaba yo hace unos momentos, ¿se acuerdan, hermana? Cuando el Señor le lavó los pies a los discípulos y le estaba lavando los pies a, a Pedro y Pablo, Pedro le dijo, Señor, no me los laves a mí, yo no soy digno de que me los laves a mí, soy yo el que te los... Dijo el Señor, si no, si no lo hago, no tienes parte conmigo. Entonces, aquí el Señor dice en el verso 15, dice, por ejemplo, porque ejemplo os he dado para que como yo os he hecho, vosotros también haga, hagáis. O sea, está diciendo que por eso te lavé los pies, para que tú también vayas y lo hagas a tus hermanos, o sea, a, a, a los que, a, a tus hermanos en Cristo, por ejemplo, por eso es que a veces tenemos, eh, 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 cuando tenemos la, la cena, la santa cena, ¿se acuerdan? Lo han hecho en otras ocasiones, aquí lo, lo hemos hecho, ya tenemos mucho que no lo hacemos, pero 
practicamos, eh, debemos de practicar la Santa Cena, el lavamiento de pies, ¿verdad? Sí. Lavarnos los pies. Y no, no, ah, no se los ah, amén. Ah, eso el, del lavamiento de pies me tocó en una ocasión cuando estaba en otra congregación hace muchos años, fíjese. Y ya no, no, no lo hemos hecho. El lavamiento de pies aquí no lo hemos hecho. Hicimos la Santa Cena, pero el lavamiento de pies no. Entonces, pues, por, sí. Entonces eh, eh, hermana, eh, este, ah, y, y lo hizo, el Señor lo hizo como ejemplo. Pero a lo que decía yo, que también, a, a, a mi punto de vista, también para dejarnos, limpi, para dejarnos a ellos limpiecitos, o sea, como el señal de que Él hizo, hizo su, su, cumplió su llamado. ¿Me entiende? Dios lo, llamó, lo mandó carnalmente, es Él mismo, pero carnalmente lo envió para poner un ejemplo. Entonces Él ya, como diciendo, ya los dejé limpiecitos. Yo ya me voy. Okay. Entonces, así nosotros, usted también, con su, con, 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 con su cosecha, ¿verdad? Con su reproducción, porque dice, ¿verdad? La palabra del Señor que las ovejas son las que reproducen. Y sí es obvio, o sea, los animales, el, el, el ganadero tiene sus vacas, las vacas son las que solas están haciendo más becerritos y más becerritos. Entonces, bueno, eh, eh, así usted, usted reproduce, usted la la forma a la persona que, que, ¿verdad? que le está instruyendo en el Señor, lo, lo va formando. Haga de cuenta que usted está haciendo el trabajo de limpiarlo también. Okay. Usted lo está limpiando. Y, y, y llega a, a, su, a, a su conclusión y, y termina su trabajo, su trabajo en su obra. Entonces ya está en la persona, ¿verdad? Si sigue caminando rectamente o se desvía. Hey, man, uh, I was just reinforcing Brother Kenneth What, what you were saying to the sisters for, for uh, to be more uh, understanding in what you were preaching because uh, what you were talking, Brother Kenneth, God used you in a great way, but we're in a process that uh, we're getting accommodated uh, the, uh, God's way. And, and I appreciate what you did Uh, and, and using my wife uh, as a service for uh, to be translating to the sisters, and this is where we already broke that ice. This day we already we already broke that ice, and she's gonna uh, my wife she's gonna become a great uh, translator where she's gonna be used by God in, in that manner, and she's gonna do it well. I have that faith, and uh, uh, I know that. Uh, Just as we are going to be growing as a church here um, in this place, I know that the people that is uh, watching us Sunday after Sunday, I know that they are going to be growing with us as well. They are going to be learning. And then, and then they're going to see the other side of the coin. They're just seeing right the, uh, the appearance, the apparel, but they're going to see the other side. What does that mean? And uh, when we see the other side, to see through the other side of, of a person, we're gonna see his interior. And then we're gonna be able to see all the way across. And we're gonna know the intentions of everybody in this place. Amen. So let's stand up on our feet today. Let's be dismissed and in the Lord today uh, from this place and uh, not from his presence because we want to stay we want to be in his presence all, uh, every, each and every day of our lives we want to be with him and we want him to be with us we don't want Jesus to uh, uh, stay apart from us right we want to uh, for Jesus to be with us in all time hallelujah to be uh, protecting our spiritual life every day so let's